this is good. Um, do you people know Deaf Noodles? Deaf Noodles is Keemstar's competition. The only Keemstar competition. He just started doing exactly what Keemstar does and covering YouTube and influencer news. Okay. And he got very famous by doing it. What's great about Deaf Noodles, he's perfect for us. Deaf Noodles considers himself to be one of our comedians. Yeah. And he doesn't give a fuck. Wait, how does this work? I'll have to hear it. Believe me, I've got a great Deaf Noodles. It's a, oh, Deaf Noodles. Yes, this guy, Deaf Noodles, he rules. You're going to love this guy because we've caught him right at a great part of his career where he's going haywire and he's doing all the best stuff enough to coin a term. Now, I looked through some of these DMs the other day to show you on the show, and while I could have blurred some stuff out, there was some private information in these DMs. Okay, so I really wasn't able to pull any good screenshots. Like um, what? Well, there's private information that he's telling me that I'm sure he wouldn't want me to release. There's private information that I'm telling him about my privates. <laughs> what did you tell him? Private information about my privates. <laughs> The size, the location. So, Deaf Noodles, he's this commentary guy. Now, probably, but here, I, I, let me find it on my phone. He, he's this commentary guy, and I knew I could get to him because he posted about me once. Okay? And it was back when, what was the incident that Deaf Noodles posted? He had a big Twitter account, and he posted, you know, the news, what was going on. And he posted something that was about us being in trouble with somebody. Remember this, Jules? Years ago, yeah, right? It was some, I think it was about Big Mike's Lamborghini lie. Big Mike's Lamborghini lie. Remember when Big Mike went around the whole world telling, yeah, she bought a Lambo. And then we find out, it's least. Classic. So Deaf Noodles reported on this. Red Bar busts Big Mike for deaf, uh, for lying about Lambo. Okay, let me find these. Uh, think. I just want to show you the date here. Do, 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 do. These are DMs between me and Deaf Noodles. Now, the uh, I can't tell you everything about Deaf Noodles, but what happened was is Deaf Noodles started becoming good friends with, hold on, I'm still scrolling, with H3, Ethan Klein. And he went on Ethan Klein's thing and he would always write nice things about Ethan Klein and his little news things. Okay, perfect. I found the post. And he went on H3 and then he really blew up after his relationship with the Kleins. And he started getting all of H3's fans who, if you didn't know, were all kind of uh, this new type of fan ever since this frenemy started with Trisha. All of Ethan's fans are these 16 to 19-year-old, very lonely, some would say morbidly obese. I think they go up to like 35. They do. They really do. But there's a giant portion of them that are these young, very lonely, very mean, vicious girls. Cutters, if you will. So when I saw Deaf Noodles months and months and months ago, here's the date. Let's see. Uh, This is June 3rd, 2021. June 3rd, 2021 is when I talked to him. And then again on January 31st, 2021. And I'm speaking to him in this conversation. Or let's just make sure that date's right. It could be January 31st, 2022, right? That's a recent January. Is that the last January we had? Yeah. I get very confused by the Januaries and the years still, <laughs> even though I'm born in January. January. So I said, hey, any chance you could spare some time to talk shortly? So because he covered me, I was going to go in there. I saw he was butting it up, butting it up. with Ethan. So my idea back then was to simply create a rift. Okay. <laughs> so this is what was happening. Deaf Noodles started blowing up for covering drama. But he was also only blown up because of his friendship with Ethan Klein. So he would never report on Ethan even though Ethan was the main guy that should be reported on every day. Like every day he would watch H3 and every day he would do something horrific that should be the biggest drama news, but nobody was doing it. And Deaf Noodles was the biggest drama guy at the time and he wasn't covering any of Ethan's blunders. Deaf Noodles, if he would have covered Ethan 
during that time period, every time that Ethan messed up, Ethan would be canceled by now. It was that bad. But Def never did. So I go, I got to get to Def Noodles and tell him how bad Ethan is and try to manipulate him into believing this. So he defriends Ethan and starts covering him. And then we could take down H3. So I do this whole back and forth with Duff Noodles, pretending that I'm here looking out for him, okay? But it's really just to create a rift, okay? Common manipulation that people do online in their 40s. So I'm talking to him and I'm saying, listen, I've got some concerns here. I'd really appreciate it if you'd hear me out. And people don't start like that anymore. You know, I talk old school, 90s. So I go, this is what I do to people. And no one will turn you down if you approach them like this. Hey, man. Listen, I've got some something really concerning I want to talk to you about. <laughs> Any chance you'd hear me out? Then they're like, oh, my God, nobody's ever asked. Because usually people just DM their demands. You are this. You're this. You got to do this. You got to. And that's a total turn up. So I go, Any chance you could. You'd hear me out, and I use this language. And he says, I appreciate it. Feel free to share your thoughts. And that's how I imagine he talked at the time. I had no idea he was a New York guy. I say, thanks. Well, to start, blah, blah, blah. You're really great. You've been doing good. <laughs> okay. I have no ill intentions here, but I truly believe. Here's where it's a, I have no ill intentions here because I'm really at the time, everyone was trolling Ethan, and I really didn't want him to think, oh, here comes this guy just trolling. So I'm really trying to build this up. You know, weeks prior to this, I'm liking <laughs> his post, sending him positive vibes. Okay. So I said, I have no in ill intentions here, but I truly believe that Ethan is not who you think he is. And he's got no reason not to believe me here. I go, <laughs> I've been carefully watching for years. And I could say without a doubt, that Ethan has taken things into a terrible direction. And the audience you guys are sharing right now is going to eventually turn on you and devour you both. I've seen this play out many times. I know it's exciting to have new fans, but the fans you guys are cultivating are not the ones you really want. They're the beauty community fans that grew tired of harassing Jeffree Star. They want blood. And right now, you're feeding them what they desire. But when they grow tired of you guys, they will desire and destroy you. <laughs> Ethan created this audience by pandering. Or Ethan kind of created this by pandering to an audience that he saw was ripe for the picking. Buddying up. Buddying up with Ethan compromised your entire craft. Ethan is actually the one who needs to be reported on daily. <laughs> I'm not one to reach out. I usually just flame people on my show when I don't like what they're doing. But I know you're a decent guy, and I really think you should consider what I'm telling you. I know that's a lot all at once. Feel free to tell me to piss off, <laughs> but I'm being sincere. You said piss off? Well, I'm censoring myself. That now, <laughs> listen, wait, this is the funny part. Now... <laughs> Hold on. That was, <laughs> listen, this is the funny part. That was January 31st. <laughs> I get no response. <laughs> February 17th comes along. And I realize, oh, he never responded to any of this shit. February 17th comes around. Anybody home? I asked politely if you had time to speak. You said, sure. Then ghosted me. <laughs> what gives? He replies instantly. Hey, Mike, sorry, I didn't mean to ghost. Let's talk about this. Feel free to share your thoughts. By the way, I totally understand what you're saying. I saw some of it last week. So then I go on and I keep telling him they're going to devour you. It gets to the point where he, and we're talking a lot now, every week I'm pulling examples of Ethan and sending them to him to the point where he gets so mad at me <laughs> that he finally restricts me. <laughs> Well, he's asking here, Mike, what's your phone number? I keep just sending him Ethan crime after Ethan crime. All these, look at all these videos and pictures of Ethan. They're turning, or what did I say? I said, just in case you're blasted with too many comments to keep up, it's official. The majority of the comments on your post about Ethan are against him now. Oh, that I'm sending him. Is this an Ethan fan page? All the stuff that I've warned him about. <laughs> and I keep sending him this stuff. Um, and I keep going. I'm just wanting him to 
acknowledge my prediction. My prediction from over a year ago was that they're going to turn on you. They're going to turn on Ethan. They're going to turn on you. This is all going to go to shit. And I keep messaging, are you starting to believe my prediction yet? My prediction has officially come to life. Please watch today's H3 in full. Please, because I'm begging this guy to start reporting on Ethan. I don't want to do it. I'm not one of these guys who like, need. I want it for myself. I want just someone doing it. So I don't have to. I mean, it's killing me. Um, and then this is about the time where he stops completely responding to me. <laughs> and it's just uh, me. And so July, cut to July 28th, 7.31 p.m. When it was official, remember that gay kid, Adam McIntyre, I was showing you, does the drama? Love him. I write, and now it's official. They come for you. Watching this Adam McIntyre video right now. SMH. Faceplant. <laughs> so, let's see where Deaf Noodles is at now. You're going to love this video. It's exactly where I told him he was going to be. Where are we here? Uh, Deaf Noodles meltdown video. The entire internet is covering him. He's a national fool now, <laughs> being devoured by the ones he pandered to. You know, him and Ethan, they loved the clicks, right? They loved the money. They loved the Teddy Fresh sales. They wanted it all. They took too much. And now they're both being terminated by the same people that got them to their Welcome heights. Welcome, folks. Hope you're all doing amazing today. There are only a couple of tickets left for the roast. Make sure you get the them. The roast. Okay, I got to explain what the roast is. Deaf Noodles, during this whole meltdown, decided to buy himself some offices. Okay, like us. Remember, we bought offices. We're cool now. We've got studios, shipping facilities. <laughs> he bought this crummy old amplifier store. In Los Angeles, it's like really out of date and shitty. Like the walls are, it's really out of date. And we've got some great videos to show. Maybe we'll show this afterwards. He was, for weeks, he was showing, guys, this whole place is going to turn into a comedy club. And we're like, what? And he built this wall behind him as a stage. See this door and this brick wall? This is Deaf Noodle Street. It's the fake brick wall. He's planning on having everybody come and do roast battle. This is what he says. I'm doing roast battle. And he never, this wasn't a part of his thing at Why all. Why would... is the stage doors? Nobody knows. Because it, it, I guess there was a door there previously to get to the other office. So he had them put some brick on this wall with the door. And now you're going to stand where he that stands. That can't be the stage if there's doors. We're going to find, we're going to go over all those videos. Because this is crazy. This guy has turned into the best fool. If you haven't seen this video yet, you're in luck. You're in luck. This is good. And we've coined a new term with this video. You're going to love this. And uh, again, this is just, he's getting exactly what we hoped for. And it, it's truly amazing. I mean, everything. And it, I didn't even have to wait too long for the prediction to take hold. So Ethan Klein, I still have hope. This could still happen to Ethan. He could lose it all. Oh, by the way, like two nights ago, Mike was looking at me and going, I just think that you're probably going to die. I know you're going to die yeah. and leave me. Yeah. Why? And? And I'm like, why would you predict oh, yeah. that? <laughs> now I am going to die soon. Well, I've got a big hunch. You know, my, every one of my hunches comes true. And my newest hunch is that Jules barely has Before any time. Oh, this was <laughs> Sorry. My newest hunch? Uh -huh. Jules clock is ticking. She's going to get hit by a train or something real soon. Cancer. But she, I will lose her soon. She will pass. So start planning, ladies. <laughs> Need a new one of the her. Maybe you could start training someone now to fill in for all this. Because this is going to be, there's going to be no show if she dies. And I know it's coming. <laughs> and don't look to me. This sucks. You could just predict that I'll stay alive till a hundred. I don't make or how the about prediction. You predict that I don't we come up with the predictions. Die on the same day from a nope. lightning strike. Sorry, every day I wake up with the same vision, and it's of you dead. <laughs> sorry. Uh, all right, let's hear. From, I'm so sorry to tell you that. Let's hear from Death Noodles and see what he said. This is great. This is a dr and it's our favorite type of video. Here it is. Addressing the haters. 
You guys ready for one of the best addressing the hater videos ever? These are great. And it's always the same thing. It's a guy he starts getting piled on, starts getting mass critiqued. And what does he think he's going to do? Address the haters. He's going to, he's got the edit. It's never worked for anyone else, but he's going to tell them to fuck off in a way that's going to work. And it doesn't. They hate him even more now. So here it is, addressing the haters from his dream studio. And by the way, this is shot, I mean, the grudge snack ban with the grudge <laughs> was shot nicer than this. No joke. So here he is, the best. The newest fool and one of our newest addressing the hater videos. It's Steph Noodles with addressing the new allegations. Here it is. Take it, Def. This will be the first show that we're doing in oh. this comedy club that I just built. Listen. It'll feature some of the best comics in Los Angeles. So This comedy club I just built. This is the comedy club, by the way. It doesn't look any better when you zoom out. It's just a yellow. We're going to have a comedy show in this comedy show, uh, club that I built, and some of the best comics in L.A. are going to be there. None of that's happening. And it's not a comedy club. This is what I mean. It starts out awesome, this tape. There's no comedy club, and there's no best comics coming. <laughs> it's left for the roast. Make sure you get them before they're gone. This is crazy. This roast will be the first show that we're doing in this comedy club that I just built. It'll feature some of the best comics in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. So make sure you get the tickets to the roast before they're completely Can't gone. The there are roast. only a couple of tickets left. Yeah, Trust me. You want to be here because it's history in the making. We're doing something that's never been done before really? in the New York or Los Angeles comedy community. Really? It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Roast. So make sure you get your tickets before they're completely gone. The links so will be. They're doing something that no comedians ever tried. I don't know. I guess the only difference is it's out of an amp store where they sold amplifiers. Not even a name brand. I mean, I would kill to know about this amp store. I'm into amps. I got, look, cut to the wide shot. Amps everywhere. Never used. I don't know how to use them. I don't know how to get them out of standby mode. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, I love amps. And that's how shitty this amp store is. I don't even know the name. It wasn't PV. It wasn't Boogie. Hold on, I'm trying oh, to load up. Oh, was digging. I wish you could see Don't talk him. about the dog on the show. He's cute. Um, hold on a second. This spoon is not the best spoon. Um, okay, <laughs> let's go to Deft Noodles here. And um, and uh, you're going to love this fucking video. Watch. In the description down below as well as the pinned comment. Anyway, I want to use today's show as a way to respond to a lot of your comments. There has yes. been an incredibly huge amount of negativity in the comments. And while I've often responded with tongue-in-cheek comments, jokes, and bits, I don't think that my message is really getting through to the people that have been the most vocal. Uh -oh. So I'm going to respond to some comments that exemplify some of the more popular things people have been him. saying in my comments. So let's get to it. Is Dennis friends with Addison Ray's dad or something? He keeps taking his side, which is very confusing given the situation. I am okay, friends. This one, this one isn't that important, but I guess he keeps taking Addison Ray's dad signed. Which is not allowed. So I don't know if we have to show that one. Oh yeah, that's probably like the yeah. only skippable part. But okay, you yeah. could go to two thirteen. Two thirteen. Yeah, let's start there because that one is more for his internal issues with his fans. Okay, and we'll start here. Yeah, I know some of the people involved and have a broader perspective on what's happening. There you go. Why are you lecturing people? Still watch you on trolls. Your comment section has been people trying to help you. I don't know what you're doing. This is a logical <laughs> fallacy from so the beginning. This is great. So now he's reading the stuff from the haters. Hey, listen, man, I don't know why you keep doing this. You're spazzing out. Everyone in the comments is trying to help you. We're your fans. Why won't you listen to us? So, yeah, your comment section is people trying to help you. So this is really the start of the, and he's going fast here, but you'll get the idea. Listen to this has been people trying to help you. I don't know what you're doing. This is a logical fallacy from beginning to end. First off, me sharing my thoughts in a comedic manner, making a bit out of trolling the trolls, is me expressing something that I'm going through in the way that I best know how to do. This is my channel, and it's going to reflect my thoughts, opinions, and life experiences. With that being said, I'm currently literally receiving hundreds, if not thousands, of messages every week telling me to off myself. Okay, so this is perfect. <laughs> when I had messaged him, it was all deaf new to love. I mean, there's nobody against him. Where is my DM? Where is it? Is it? 
Ooh. Is there a little line there? That's very black. Where's my DM? Mike was right. Thank you. Could have saved yourself a lot of trouble there. Hundreds of thousands of people are now telling him to off himself. He could have prevented it all if he would have just listened to me. Because he's now he's trying to go my route here where it's fuck all those people, right? Yeah. So I could have saved you some drama. He's in hell now. Watch this. <laughs> some of my real fans have also been getting the same treatment just for trying to defend me. In fact, one of my fans was recently harassed to such an extent that she had to deactivate her social media because the level of harassment was causing oh. her to relapse and have thoughts of suicide. Oh. So this shit has been going way too far, okay? I live in Thoughts of suicide. Could you imagine what, what could have been sent to her to thoughts of suicide? So he's trying to use that. Look at what he's saying to people. Let's commit suicide. <laughs> um, but look what he's tweeting to people. People who usually have this talking point that comedy cannot touch on serious topics are usually not very versed on the depths of comedy. This oh, wait, you the hear tweet. the second this one, the second one. definitely not the tweet that I wanted to read. I just put in a few of his greatest hits, uh, but yeah, it's very the second threatening. one that you're okay, looking Okay, yeah, at. here we go. So here, this is more like it. Um, hey, do you want to educate people on comedy so we could understand your jokes? Genius, yeah, because he's been going around saying... Like the first one, you know. Yeah. So he says this to somebody. Go educate yourself at the end of a barrel of a loaded shotgun. So kill yourself. So he's telling his That's fans cool. to kill themselves. And when they attempt the suicide, he yells at us. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so, Mr. Sh and, see, I'm not like that. If people I hate start committing suicide. There you go. That's what I wanted. I'm not one to be like, oh, no, no, suicide. Oh, I'll stop. No. Sorry. If I hate you and now you want to commit suicide, then I have won. Sorry. But these guys like to parade around town and say, oh, suicide, everything must stop. We must all stop criticizing him because one of his listeners, you see, wants to commit suicide over it. Okay? So I'm going to start there. Yeah, that's a nice thing to do up top to try to manipulate us into stopping. We're never stopping. We want them all dead. Don't you get it? This is a supporter of yours? <laughs> well, if she committed suicide, you'd have less supporters. And that's what we want. We're trying to cancel you. Don't you understand? That's by any means necessary. So it's not going to work on us. Just for trying to defend me. In fact, one of my fans was recently harassed to such an extent that she had to deactivate her social media because the level of harassment was causing her to relapse and have thoughts of suicide. So this shit has been going way too far. Damn. Okay? Too far. I live in the real world. Uh -oh. The internet shit was never my main goal. The real world. California. The real world approach. Not MTV's real world like Christina P's real world approach. The real world approach. We've seen Big Mike take this one. This is a great one where this is the internet. I live in the real world. So your criticisms and comments here. Listen, I live in the real world, okay? <laughs> this internet shit, this is all nonsense. But don't you make a full career off this internet nonsense? And then all of a sudden, it's always real world. We've seen Big Mike uh, do this. You don't know me in person. If you knew me in person. Oh, okay. So shame on me. We can never criticize or talk about anybody unless we know them in person, in real life. You've seen this from H. Foley. <laughs> I don't even know the guy. That's what I think he's going to say about me when he sees me. <laughs> All right, you got to listen to this. Don't listen to me. Listen to this shit. This shit gets great. Causing her to relapse and have thoughts of suicide. So <laughs> this shit has been going way too far, okay? I live in the real world. Real the world. internet shit was never my main goal. Oh. But it happened to pop off during the pandemic, and now I'm doing my best with it. But at the end of the day, I exist in the real world. Mm. I live by the rules Not like of us. the real world. I'm running multiple businesses. Ooh. I now have a comedy club, nope, a nope, podcast nope, studio. Nope, no, no, I'm no. This is, by the way, this is the podcast. The podcast studio, we'll show you this. It's, it's literally a closet. I mean, it's him, the computer, and a wall. <laughs> and, I mean, he bought the littlest space that he could for the money that he had. And now, I own a comedy club. I own a pot. You don't. 
You know? Do you have a drum set yet? Can you fit a drum set in your space? If not, it's not a club. So let's see what he says next. I'm running multiple businesses. I now have a comedy club, a podcast studio. I make these videos for fun. Oh. And I'm going to make them however the fuck I want to make them for the audience that enjoys them. I have a vision. And I'm seeking to manifest that vision. And you can either be so excited. very Josh Denny. You're either with me or you're against me. I've got a vision. Now, of course, I say something like this. People go, shit, the vision. It stops them in their tracks. It doesn't work with your audience. Your audience isn't here for your vision he's of Denny-ing running a comedy club. Like crazy. Like this is Denny out. Like this tweet he tweeted. I'm far beyond giving a fuck. I'm so Ooh. far beyond giving a fuck that I'm monetizing the hatred that Ooh. all the trolls and the bandwagon the haters have been aiming at me. So keep doing your thing, trolls. I'm going to keep doing mine. The only Ooh. difference is the money I'm making up. Oh, shit. <laughs> so he's one of these guys with the attitude. This never works. To make them however the fuck I want to make them for the audience that enjoys them. I have a vision. And I'm seeking to manifest that vision. And you can either be excited and want to come along with me, or you can complain. And honestly, if you're part of the latter, then I just feel bad for you because I don't give a fuck about your complaints. Ah. I don't care that you didn't like the background. Ah, I, the I don't, you don't like the background. <laughs> well, you should care because. You should care. Backgrounds are. Was supposed to be your dream. Yeah, this is your dream. <laughs> That's the worst background. It's crooked. It looks like Uncle Joy's joints. Uh, it's terrible. And uh, you do care. This whole I don't care part again. You know who doesn't care? Me! Proven. <laughs> By my not caring. But you can't make videos and tweets and be whining on the internet every day when you don't care. People who don't care and don't you speak. Do, you would care if your yes, whole of course. fan base if was my turning enti- and Yeah, that's you. the thing that they always it's forget. Like, yeah, you you should care. care. This is your whole fan base. You shouldn't care if it's just a bunch of guys that never liked you in the first place. But these are the reason you bought this dream comedy club was because of these people. And they're like, if I came back with this studio and everyone was like, oh, it fucking sucks. We fucking hate this place. I'd be like, oh, my God, we got to fit. We would care. Remember when Joe Rogan built the red tube? Everybody told him he hated it. And what did he do? That was like the end of a lot of people's journey with Joe Rogan, because instead of owning it, fixing the red tube, he pretended he he but really, even he fixed it in the but end. But even he secretly. fixed it in the end to a beautiful space. Now it's gorgeous. Did you see they got a humidor in there? Right in the shot. In the wide shot is a humidor shoved into the smallest corner of his whole facility. He's got 17,000 square feet outside that door. But he put the humidor in the shot because he's a cigar guy. All right, back to Deaf Noodles. This gets good. I don't care that you saw some random flaw in a video that I made a couple of weeks ago. I am not here to make videos for the complainers. Mm. I am making videos for the people who support me. The people who support me on Patreon, link down below. The channel members, also link down below. I am here to serve the people who love my content, not the winos with a misplaced sense of justice or ownership over my content. So is that a do with the winos? Does that mean you whine? I guess. I thought winos were yeah, that was like a- drunks. So he ain't doing this for the wine. You've seen this attempt before. So this is another. He's doing like eight attempts in one video. And wait till you see when he gets to the new one that we're coining now. It's been attempted so many times we had to coin it today. Wait till you hear this next one. Not the winos with a misplaced sense of justice or ownership over my content, especially when all they do is watch my video so they can bitch about it. In fact, if you're ever curious about who these winos are, just click on the profile of some of these people claiming to be fans in the mm. comments and expressing concern. You can see their comment history. And from that, you will quickly find out that some of the people with the most opinions and criticisms about my content who present themselves as fans or former fans have never, in fact, actually enjoyed my content. And are This just- would be like if I made a, a speech, a serious speech about the Tate hate that I've been getting. <laughs> yeah. Those people in the comments who said that they hate me in L, 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 <laughs> not top two, do not be fooled. Those are distractors. <laughs> They're here to lie to you 
Who cares? <laughs> uh, and by the way, he's 38. He's no kid. He was lying about being 28. He was lying about being 10 years younger. They caught him this week. Damn. That too. I'm not kidding. I know. Because somebody, I guess, put his age. This is his excuse for it. Somebody put my age as 28 on Wikipedia. No, he said that he was trying to be an actor and mm. they recommended that he oh, pretend really? to be younger. So, so it's even did. worse than I thought. And oh, then wow. It was like on some actor's profile oh. said he was 28 or and something. And then, but he said something like how, and it was up on this website. So people just thought I was that age. And I just thought, let's not confuse the situation. And yeah. Really? But it was on that website because he And now they find out he's 38, they're wrong. livid, and he's trying to tell them all the fuck off. Imagine if you found out something like that. Okay, let's uh, see what happens next. That's Angel, crazy. Former fans have never- oh, 24, he was saying he's 24, not 28. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, is that true? That's even worse. In fact, actually enjoyed my content and are just jumping on the hate bandwagon to gain attention or- Whatever else motivates these trolls. Now, I don't make content for them. I make content for my fan base, the people who actually fuck with me. And this whole phase this channel is going through right now is really showing me the difference between uh -oh. fly-by-night fans and actual followers. Oh. You see, for a while, it was trendy to like me, to follow me. But that has changed to the polar opposite. Now it's a trend to hate and criticize me. In fact, you, you built a business... Hating and criticizing everybody on the internet, you collected drama beauty community fans that only watch drama and hate, you pandered to them for two years. And were super and then, petty and strict. Super petty and strict with everybody else. He's suing Keemstar right now because Keemstar called him a pedo. This is not a joke. There was a lawsuit on the books. You could look it up. He is right now suing Keemstar for Keemstar calling him a pedo. No joke. He says it is vicious slander. Now, that's really all he does. So when his fans found out that he's also a bad guy, they turned to him because they're not here for him. They're just here for drama. And they want just to see YouTubers fall we all do this is really what the world wants we just want to go online see a man fall lose it all and then do that again to another man okay this is what we're all doing it should be the uniting force and the reason that all of his fans turned on him is because he called someone else a pedophile after Isn't suing keemstar crazy. for calling him so a keemstar pedophile. calls him a pedophile as a joke he sues keemstar and then calls a guy that everybody likes a pedophile, and he's not. So all his fans were like, what the fuck, bro? You're suing Keemstar for calling someone a pedo, and now you're calling a non-pedo a pedo. And he's like, I don't have to explain my life to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> They're going to turn. And they turned fully, and now it's this, yelling at the people. You did this all. You built this dream for yourself. Changed to the polar opposite. Now it's a trend to hate and criticize me. In fact, many, many, many people have been making videos criticizing me for all sorts of things, which is fine. Make it paper. But this whole scenario has revealed Ew. to me who actually fucks with me and what my actual fan base cares about. Mm. And that's what I'm focusing on from now on. Damn, I hate Dennis's takes. He's like the worst of both sides. Mm. So don't watch my videos. Ah. Literally, no one is forcing you to watch my videos. That one. Why do you even click on them? Folks, because let me explain something you to you. click all bait them. That's why you click on them because it says, Addison Ray's dad caught in scandal. Jeffree Star caught lying. They're not clicking on it for you. So now that you've changed this whole thing into a Dennis comedy zone... They're like, we don't want Dennis Comedy Zone. We don't want roast battles of you and weirdo people you found in L.A. that aren't comics. This is bizarre. Um, the, you can play it from here. Yeah. Why do you even click on them? Folks, let me explain something to you. All of us are brought into this world for a limited time. In uh -oh. the grand scale of the universe, our existence lasts less than a blip <gasps> of a blip on a radar. Oh. <gasps> 
Does that make sense? The universe is billions of years old, nice. constantly expanding at an ever-increasing rate for another billion of billions of years. There you go. Meaning that our time on this earth, if we live to the average amount of years that an average human exists in this earth for, that's about 70 years, is less than a drop of water in the ocean. Wait, wait, the wait. Are you? I think I'm putting this together. So wait. If we're all just on these rocks spinning through the universe and there's really no point to any of this, then why are we wasting our time criticizing you? Because we're on a spinning... Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the Sagan quote. Is that right? <laughs> no, no, no. I totally screwed that up. Why did you even laugh? Ladies and gentlemen, is that what it's called? The Carl Sagan Cope. This is what it's called. <laughs> the Carl Sagan Cope. Cope. Here, cut back to him. Of course, this is a Cosmos Cope. Okay, you could call it the Cosmos Cope. This is the spinning rock theory. This is the why would we waste our time when we're just... And guess who we're going to see? Wait, I didn't just go up in volume, did I? Guess who we're going to see do this? Is that right? Do I sound louder or is that just me? No, I think you're good. Okay, weird. I hope. Uh, we're going to see, is it Big Mike or Logan do yep. this next? Which one? Both of them. Kinda. Both of them. So Big Mike and Logan are going to do a, and that was enough. So we saw this one this week and the Big Mike one, and we go, you know what? We need a term for this. The Cosmos Cope. The Carl Sagan Cope. You could call it whatever you want. That's where they try to manipulate you into thinking, oh, there's, we're just uh, in the universe, so nothing matters. And okay. Sure. You got away with it then. Yeah, then. Oh, we yeah. all apologize. Oh, we're on the moon. Oh, yes, there's a moon. Oh, of course. What was I thinking? This will not work. This earth, if we live to the average amount of years that an average human exists in this earth for, that's about 70 years, is less than a drop of water in the ocean. The ocean being representative of the billions of years in the universe. Now, with all that being said, if we are all in agreement that we have a limited amount of time on Earth. There it is. And that time is very finite. Oh, yes. And very short. Then what the actual fuck <gasps> are people doing, wasting their <sighs> lives doing something they don't want to be doing? Ah, uh, <laughs> okay. Guys, delete your comments. In fact, what are we doing to all these people here? Oh, man. We're so stupid. The stars, of course. Should we show the big mic one quickly? Yeah, let's do the big mic one and then we'll come we'll get back, back to, this. to this. They're all doing this one now. The new trend is it's either this one. It's um, you don't know us personally or and then this to me is like when you've really, you know, you're really cornered and you've got nothing else left. No defense left. When you're really cornered, it's the spinning rock. Joe Rogan has tried this one. Oh, you're going to hear this from a lot of people. So. Let's make it a trend on our show now to play those moments. Maybe we could even make a compilation video if we could find like four or five of these. And we could have the Cosmos music and all the, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson and all that. Send me that big mic one. Let's do that one. I dragged it Impulsive. up to the top. Yeah, the Carl Sagan Cope. There it is. I don't have a link to that, though. Oh, I just... Yeah, send me that one. And... Um, there it is. And what time is this one? Go at? to 30.30. 30.30. Here you go. You can see it. Away and not thinking about what it does to society. Oh, society. I love that. 30.30? <laughs> yep. Here you go. So Logan is going to tell us now. Now, Logan got into a bit of a thing on yeah. Twitter that I can't comment on because I haven't seen the movie, but he hated the movie Nope and everybody mocked Oh, him yeah, 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 yeah. So he made this vicious post saying, nope, the new black movie was the worst movie you've ever seen, bro. And so he got a lot of hate, a lot of pylons, and this is what he has to say to the haters. Take it, Logan. And this is going to hurt some of your feelings out there, you people who are holding on to that artistic integrity and want to pretend you understand the values of this very confusing, very stretched thematic film. Your opinions don't matter either. We are all just fucking stupid ants running around on a planet pretending we're significant. We're not. That's Nothing matters. So Have you seen true. the NASA telescope that just... Oh, there it is. 
and how funny is it now that we've identified and oh my god a guy in the chat named blue glass says pale blue cope pale blue cope that's, oh, that's beautiful. perfect beautiful 